الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتا ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خضولا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المرء, المرء مع دين خليله المرء على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالق أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام <coughs> Respected brothers, respected scholars Respected elders I begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful, the most compassionate May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the blessing of mercy upon our final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and those who follow him until the day of resurrection. Mashallah, I believe that there are at least 50 people who are staying here for the etikaf and for the 48 hours, 24 hours etikaf. Mashallah, I would just like to congratulate them and say mubarak to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your etikaf. This etikaf, the maqsad of etikaf, very important to understand the maqsad of etikaf, the purpose of etikaf. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent the entire 10 days whilst in Medina, entire 10 days in etikaf, in search for Laylatul Qadr and in, 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 in the reason to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The maqsad and the purpose is to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, the ultimate goal, insan, the human being, our life, our purpose, the objective, all objective, the one objective is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether that is through our salah, whether that is through our soul fasting, whether it is through ibad, any types of ibadat. Jamaat, if you go out in tabligh, go out, go do dhikr, athkar, tilawat, that we have just recited Quran. All of this, the objective is only one. And the objective is to please our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we have pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are successful in this world and in the hereafter. And the objective of etikaf is to find and get close to Allah. To get close to Allah and to become Allah's friend. She has become Allah's companion, so, you know, become the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's companion. And this is why we sit in etikaf, disconnect ourselves from the world. Sometimes, unfortunately, this is for the, especially those that are sitting in etikaf, those who intend to sit in etikaf in the last 10 days, is for those as well. Sometimes when we sit in etikaf, we are still connected to the world. Well, maqsad, why, what, why are we given a small you know, a cubic uh, place, small place to stay just for the reason that we connect ourselves to Allah and disconnect ourselves from the, uh, from the world. Unfortunately, our phones today, we are so glued on to our phones, even, even our etikaf, we are still connected to the world. We are still, na'udhu billah, some of us committing guna sitting in the masjid. We are taking this, uh, this phone into our jamaat, we are going to take into our khanqa and our etikaf, we are taking it as students to the Darul Ulooms, and now we are still connected to the world. This is the reason sometimes we do not gain the maximum benefit from the etikaf. So one thing that we all need to do, especially from now till tomorrow, the etikaf, whenever it finishes till tomorrow, taraweeh, try to disconnect ourselves from the phone. Connect ourselves through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through any types of ibadat, we are spending in the gathering of the majlis of the angels. So try to do all the ibadat. Now the maqsad, the prophet, this is just for the people who are sitting in the etikaf, but for everyone else. See, in the month of Ramadan, we connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the question arises that on the day of Eid, on the day of Eid, all those a'mal that we have done and all those good deeds that we have gathered in the Month of Ramadan, why is it on the day of Eid that we go back to our own habits? We sometimes go back to our old ways. We start to commit sins. Straight in the next day, we start to go back to our old sins. What is the, some, the reason? What is the reason that we go back to that? It's because ourselves in the month of Ramadan, we have only 
made ourselves worship for the month of Ramadan and we haven't made the niyat to continue the ibadat beyond the month of Ramadan. We have thought that, you know, I will do Toba only for the month of Ramadan. I will recite Quran only in the month of Ramadan. I will connect myself to Allah Ta'ala only in the month of Ramadan. I will come and read my Salat in the Masjid with Jamaat only in the month of Ramadan. On the day of Eid, I want to go back to my old habits. We are not sincere, in other words, we are not sincere in our Toba. We are not sincere in our Ibadat. Even though we will, inshallah, will get the reward for doing the ibadat in the month of Ramadan. But a person who is sincere in his tawbah, which is called tawbah al nasuha a sincere tawbah is that person who never returns to his old sins or he has azam. Azam is that 100% irada intention. Your 100% ikhlas that I will never return to that sin. When we make dua, Allahumma, there's a dua of the Prophet says, Allahumma inni atubu ilayka la arji'u ilayha abada. O oh Allah, I return to you la arji'u and I will never return to that sin. So the reason is that we never return to that sin. Sometimes it's because our tawbah is not sincere. Another reason is maybe because our, the topic I want to speak about is maybe because our friendship, our companion, our group that we are staying with, they are or still, they are not sincere in their Toba. We want to change life, but the group or the, the companion that we are with, the friends that we are around, they are not letting us change. Tonight, the 19th Jews will be recited. And in the 19th Jews, in the first side, it says that on the day of judgment, وَيَوْمَ يَعُدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا A man will regret. A man will regret on the day of judgment and he will be biting his nails out of regret that I did not make my, my, my connection and I did not follow the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِ He will be in regret and saying of source, I will regret so much regret onto me. You'll be regretting. I made such a person friend. So what happens is on the day after the Eid, we go back to our friends, or we go start to stay with those companions that we continued to stay with before Ramadan, or we go back to those old habits, and those friends don't make us leave the bad habits this story is an incident about a man who was an Arab one of the Arab Qurayshi Uqba bin Abi Mu'id who did not accept Islam and his habit was once in a year he would gather the respected people from the Arabs and he would give them a da'wat so even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, he did not accept the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa call towards Islam, he would still call the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to his house for a da'wat, so for a meal. When he called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to him that, O oh, Uqba, I will only have your food if you recite the kalima and if you say, uh, say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and if you accept Islam. So Uqba bin Abi Mu'id, he accepted Islam for that moment or he read the kalima and he testified that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was the final messenger. But after the meal, he went back to his friend. His friend was Ubay bin Khalaf and there's many other Quraysh friends that he had. When he went and they said to him that, we have heard that you have left your religion, meaning you have left your religion of for our forefathers and you have left the religion for the religion of the Prophet Muhammad. So Uqba said to Ubay, he said, no, I only done this to please Muhammad and only for him to have my meal. If he walked out from, it's for the Arabs, it was like a custom. Someone walking out the house without having a meal, it was like a disgrace. That how can I let this man go and leave my house without him having to having meal? She said, I couldn't let him leave without having the meal. So for that sake, I read the kalima and I said the kalima. So then Ubay said to him, if you are truth in what you are saying, go na'udhu billah to the Prophet sallallahu and spit on his face. And this unfortunate man, Uqba, he went to the Prophet sallallahu and he spat and he tried to spit on his face of the Prophet sallallahu My point is, 
that this man was so close to accepting the deen, accepting the Prophet sallallahu the religion, the deen Islam, and would have been the path for him to Jannah. Yet his friends, when you go back to your friends, when you go back into that circle, when you go back into your friendship, what happens? Their habits or their people, the people that they are, the people that we are hanging around with, their deen or their habits are, we are following their habits. Prophet said, Al Mar'u ala Dini Khalili. Man is on the religion. Dini Khalili. Khalil is your friend, your very close friend. You are on the religion, meaning you will do exactly the same as your friends do. You should look at who your friends are. You should look at who your company is. You should look at who you are hanging around with. So you have the bad friend will give a bad effect on sohbat salih to la salih Good company will have good effect on us. A bad company will have bad effect on us. Good friends. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa his, his, his company, the sahaba acquired his company. What came, what, what those same sahaba radiallahu ta'ala, those same people who used to, you know, give taklif to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who were the enemies of Islam, because of the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they accepted the uh, call of da'wat of Islam, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And then you have the other hand, if you have good company, it's very important, good company. This is going back to the etika of the person stays in this company, stays in the month of Ramadan. When we go and do good deeds, we feel good. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala, when they were in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa their iman used to increase. We he know the famous story about Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. He says, no, no, this, Hazrat Handala radiallahu ta'ala came to Abu Bakr and said, Nafaq al Handala. That Handala has become munafiq. I have become a hypocrite. The Sahaba used to think of them going back to their family and forgetting the deen that they used to think that as hypocrisy. That how can I forget to think about Allah and Rasul? So the Handala says, Nafaq al Handala, I have become a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr said, Why are you saying this? So Handala says that when I'm with the Prophet, when we're in the company of the Prophet, when we're in the masjid, we remember Allah, our iman is very high. We want to do good deeds. But when we go back to our family, we forget Allah and Rasul. And this, I feel like it's hypocrisy. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala said, Ya um, oh, Handala, I feel the same. That when I'm in the company of the Prophet, so we feel that our iman is high. But when we go back home, or when we finish the company of the Prophet, so we go back to our old ways. So the, they both came to the Prophet, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to them, that this is how your iman is, that sometimes it is up, it is high, and sometimes it is low, that you will never remain, your iman will never remain, that in such a way that if it was to remain that high, that even the angels then would come and do musafaha and would shake hands with you. The point is that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, where even them, when they were in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when they were in the company of the pious, they used to feel the iman war was high. They would want to stay away from all kinds of sins. Soon as they used to go back to the, the family, they used to feel the decrease in the iman or not the same jazbah and the same iman level as the way when they were in the good company. So when this is the situation of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Swati brothers, when we in ourselves, when we're in the itikaf, when we're in the masjid, when we're in the gathering like this, when we are going out in the, to the jamaat, when we are going the gathering of the pious, we feel that our iman is very high. We feel that we want to continue doing good deeds. But this, is, this will only continue, this will only happen if we continue this even after Ramadan. I would like to say about the ashabikah of those youngsters that are here, this itikaf, even for this day and age, we say this day and age, because of all the, the things that are attacking outside, the, the environment outside is such that our iman today is being attacked. Our iman is being questioned. We are questioning our own iman. Why? Because of the company or because of the environment that we are in. When we come into the environment like this, this is like Ashabi Kahaf, that for them, this is the Ashabi Kahaf, the cave, was the only source of their saviour for the Iman. Our masajid today, the etikaf, going out in jamaat, all staying in the pious, staying in the company of the ulama, this is the cave, and this is the cave like the way the ashab kahf 
found the cave. They ran away from this 250 after Isa, Isa alayhi salam, 250 years. A man called Daqyanus, he was a king. He would force his people to worship an idol. His name was Daqyanus, and 250 years after, they were on the religion of Isa alayhi salam. And they were not allowed to reveal any other religion or follow any other religion other than the religion of this king Daqyanus. And he in the Quran says, In yadharu alaykum, yarujumukum, aw yu'idukum fi millatin, walan tuflihu idan abada. That if they find out your true religion, if they find out who your, your, your truly who you are following, then yarujumukum. The way in, their, in those days they would um, stone you and they would kill you by a person being stoned to death. Yarujumukum, aw yu'idukum fi millatin, or they would force you back into their religion. So the only religion they had to follow was the religion of the Qiyanus into following the idol. They were forced to follow that one religion. The Iman was being attacked. What do these seven people, no one knows their name, not you know, the Mufassirin have mentioned the name, but they are not, that is not important. Allah doesn't mention the name. The important thing is the action that they've done. For years to come until Qiyamah, Mufassirin or scholars will be discussing about those seven people. What was it that Allah Ta'ala loved their actions so much that they went away from that company, they went away from that environment and they went only for the savior for the Iman, protection of the Iman. In this day and age, the etikaf, the masajid, the da'wat tabliq jamaat work, the pious scholars and the company of scholars and in the masajid or any other forms of khidmat of dini work, the madaris, the ulama, the daru ulum, this, these are the caves for this day and age for the youngsters today. This, these are the only places we will save our iman. The otherwise today, 24 7, our phones. We are so glued on to our phone, our social media. People are glued on to TikTok. People are glued on to Instagram, Facebook. All the time for 24 hours, we are just being attacked by the batil. Batil, incorrect aqeedah, incorrect things. Yet, how much time are we spending in the masjid? How much time are we spending with the scholars? How much time are we spending in the company of the pious and the scholars? So this is a question we need to ask. So to save ourselves, the environment that we are in today, the environment that we are in, we are in etikaf, and the reason we are in etikaf is to connect ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a niyyah that we should have. That I'm going to connect myself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that inshallah, even after Ramadan, even on the day of Eid, I will continue my recitation of the Quran. I will continue my my ma'amulat, my amal, and my connection with Allah ta'ala. My niyat and the sincerity I have made the tawbah, I will continue that even on the day of Eid and after Eid and I will stay away from all kinds of sin and for this, the etikaf is the best moment where we have all the time to do amal person gets close to Allah Ta'ala by doing amal we are staying away from sins when we commit a sin sometimes we think, oh it's only a minor sin we ask him, this is a major sin minor sin, we differentiate no sin is a major or a minor sin. It is only comparing to one another. We say it's a minor sin. You know, if it's a small fire, a small spark or a big fire, the damage is still the same. Or I will only commit the minor sin. The minor sin won't harm me. Whether it's a minor sin or a major sin, every sin will harm us. Every sin will harm a person. We don't realize the harm, but that harm will be there. Not now, maybe in future, there will always be a harm of that sin. Whether it is a minor sin or a major sin. So the sin, we have to keep away from sins and connect ourselves to amal. The way to get too close to Allah, very simple. Stay away from all types of sin and do continue doing our amals. A person does his fara'id, but with his nawafil, he gets close to Allah Ta'ala. It's a hadith, that person, uh, uh, my slave gets close to me doing a'mal, doing nawafil, extra a'mal. Our Quran tilawat, our dhikr, our nawafil, that's how we get close to Allah. It's like, an, it's like a boss or a manager, he has his employees, he has to work 9 to 5. 9 to 5, he's doing his job, yes, he's got, he, he will get his minimum wage, he's getting his paid salary. But then there's another one person, individual, he's working extra hours, he's working on weekends. So then when there's a time for promotion, 
this person who is working extra hours, who is doing extra work or weekends, he will get the promotion. Similarly with Allah Ta'ala, the five faraid that we have to do, we have to perform. But with our nawafil, we will get close to Allah Ta'ala. We will get so close to Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala says, I will become his eyes that he sees with. I become his hands that he touches. I become his ears that he hears with. Meaning our eyes, our ears, our tongue, our hands, all become how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants it to become. We will do only the things that perform those actions how Allah wants us to perform those actions. So Alhamdulillah with Etika we will connect, disconnect ourselves from the dunya, connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by performing our a'mals. Our a'mals include our Qur'an tilawat, our dhikr, adhkar, that our, you know, the, the third kalima, the durus sharif daily, our, maybe the shaykh, our shaykh has prescribed us with some adhkar. We continue doing those dhikr and in our namaz and salah, in our nawafid, we have the awabin, chashd, ishraq, and tahajjud, qiyamul layb, salatul haja, salatul tawbah. There are so many other salat nawafil that we could read to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, salatul, salatul ishraq, so it's called salatul duha, stay after sunrise until when the sun begins to gain light. This is salatul, you know, the ishraq salah, then the salatul, salatul duha, is also called Salatul Awwabin. Salatul Awwabin, I'm just going to call, talk about Salatul Awwabin, which is after Maghrib. Salatul Awwabin, the scholars say, it is a sixth circus after Maghrib. It is also, some refer it to the Awwabin at Fajr, Salat after Fajr, the Ishraq Salatul Duha. Awwab in the Arabic language is Ruju, to do Ruju ila Allah. Awwab is a Sayyidah of Mubalagh, emphasized word which means to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any type of salah, we can call it awabin. But in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in Mishkat, man salla sitta raka'atin ba'd al-maghrib, person who reads six rakats after maghrib, six rakats after maghrib, person who reads those six rakats, a person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him of 12 years of ibadat, just for reading six rakats. So scholars have said after the sunnah, just read six more rakats. When we are in the etikaf, we have a chance to read six rakats. Some scholars say that even with the two sunnats, we can add four more rakats, inshallah, you will still be rewarded. But the majority scholars say it's after the two sunnats, we read our six rakats, we will get the reward for awabin, it's 12 years of ibadah daily. Salatul Ishraq, Salatul Chash. And then there's Salatul Tawbah, Salatul Tasbih, Salatul Salat Tahad Qiyamul Layl. Many other Salah we could read in the time we're in Etikaf to get close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us the ability to spend our remaining days in Etikaf in accordance to the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Give all of us the ability to spend the time in the Ramadan, to spend the rest of the time in the Ramadan in Ibadat, in worship. Um, I just want to just finish off by saying that if we, you know, our Hazrat Hafiz Patel, Rahmatullah, is to always make this dua. He says, Allah Ta'ala, humare qeemti awqaat ko zai hune se hifazat farmai. Say, Ya Allah, give us the ability to protect us from wasting our precious time. This time in Ramadan is precious. The time, the remaining days, especially the last 10 days that are coming, very precious days, a precious time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to protect ourselves from wasting time. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. La usithana na alayka anta kama athnayta ala nasika. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ya ahad as-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahum kufuan ahad. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum wa anatil wujuhu lil-hayyul qayyum. Allahumma laka al-hamdu kulluhu wa laka al-shukru kulluhu wa ilayka yarji'u al-amru kulluhu wa ala niyatuhu wa sirruhu. اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفو عنا اللهم رب الحمهما كما ربياني صغيرة اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك 
wal jannah wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wa gharabika wal nar Allahumma ij'alna min Allahumma ij'alna hadina muhtadina ghayra dhalina wa la mudhillin Allahumma inna nas'aluka al jannah wa na'udhu bika min an nar ya arhamar rahimin hamari gunahun ko maaf farma khata'un se dar guzar farma hamari sayyiat ko hasana se mubaddal farma ya arhamar rahimin ramzan ki qeemati awqat aur qeemati awqat ko hume zaye hone se hifazat farma ya allah qeemati ghariyon ke zaye hone se hifazat farma ya allah teri mohabbat naseeb farma teri ishq naseeb farma teri maarifat naseeb farma tera qurb naseeb farma ya allah tu hume apna bana le aur tu hamara ban ja ya allah tu hume apna bana le aur tu hamara ban ja ya allah baqiya ramzan ke jo awqat hai ya allah usko teri ibadat mein teri razamandi mein hame guzarne ki taufeeq naseeb farma ya allah jo ramzan ke din guzar chuke hain ya allah jis mein hame humne kutahi ki ya allah تو اس کو معاف فرما جو عبادتی کی ہے یا اللہ تو اس کو قبول فرما یا اللہ آئندہ رمضان میں یا اللہ جو رمضان کے دن باقی ہے اس کی قدر کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما لیلت القدر کی عبادت نصیب فرما لیلت القدر کی عبادت نصیب فرما یا رحم الراحمین تمام گناہوں کو معاف فرما پوری امت کے لئے مغفرت کے فیصلے فرما امت مسلمہ کی مغفرت فرما امت مسلمہ کے لئے ہدایت کے فیصلے فرما رحم کا کرم کا معاملہ فرما غفاری اور ستاری کا معاملہ فرما یسر کا سہولت کا معاملہ فرما دنیا میں جہاں کہیں مسلمان پریشان ہیں ان کی پریشانیوں کو دور فرما ہماری تمام ضرورتوں کو پوری فرما تمام مقاصد کو پورا فرما تمام مشکلات کو دور فرما بیماروں کو شفا عطا فرما مقروض کے قرضے کی ادائیگی کی غیب سے سنتیں پیدا فرما تمام پریشان حالوں کی پریشانیوں کو دور فرما یا اللہ ہم سب کو یا اللہ تیری رضا والی زندگی نصیب فرما یا اللہ جب تک تو زندہ رکھے اسلام پر زندہ رکھ ہم سب کا خاتمہ ایمان پر فرما یا اللہ ہر کام میں تیری مدد اور نصرت فر یا اللہ ہماری وجود کو ہر ایک کے لئے ہدایت کا ذریعہ بنا تیری رضا والی یا اللہ صفات پر استقامت نصیب فرما مقبولیت نصیب فرما موت کی گھری میں تیری رضا مندی نصیب فرما موت کی گھری میں تیری رضا مندی نصیب فرما ہماری دعاؤں کو آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے صدق تفیل قبول فرما ربنا تقبل منا انکا انت السمیع العلیم و تب علینا یا مولانا انکا انت تواب الرحیم سبحان ربک رب العزت اللہ صفون و سلام